I told you there is a way to actually determine the type of nuclear decay simply by graphing the stable and unstable isotopes? Amazing, right? Well, there is. Check this out. This is a representation of the band of stability. Now you'll notice this graph is really, really weird. Number one, look at the y and x axis. They don't go up by the same number. We give this graph to you guys so that it fits on, you know, a normal sheet of paper. But it's an incredibly confusing graph to read. As we start looking at the increments on here and trying to determine the number of neutrons and protons, it becomes very difficult to even find where the dot is that we're looking for. So let's try this one instead. Ah, this one has colors. It's a lot more helpful. Well, kind of. This one at least shows us what are the stable isotopes and what are the other isotopes that exist in nature and how do they actually become stable. So we have to start by taking a look at that dark line right down the middle there. Not the straight one, but the one that's kind of wiggling around. That represents all of what is known as the stable nucleides in nature, more or less. And if you follow it, it almost follows directly on that line, which represents a direct relationship between protons and neutrons, meaning for every one proton, one neutron is needed to make it stable. And then you'll see it start to deviate. And what that means is we need more neutrons as we add more protons, which makes sense because as we add more protons, the repulsion from the nucleus gets much, much stronger to a point in which we really need almost one and a half times the number of neutrons for every proton that exists. Eventually, you'll see that black line go away. After around number 82 on our periodic table or lead, there is no number of neutrons that will keep the nucleus stable. It will radioactively decay no matter what you have. Now it's kind of true and it's kind of not. And the reason being is 83 bismuth is radioactive, but its half-life is older than that of the universe. So it's debatable whether or not you want to say that's radioactive. And if you think to the right of that, to the right of that black line past 82, there's a lot of yellow out there. Yes, there's some orange and some other pieces out there as well, but that yellow indicates alpha decay. Basically, what that's trying to do is just make the nucleus smaller because it can become stable if it's smaller. And usually this happens in a series of steps. So off of past 82, the type of decay that'll take place is alpha. It's the only thing we can do. We have to make the nucleus smaller to have a chance. Where this gets a little bit more tricky to look at is if it already is small enough but has the wrong ratio. Nuclei can be considered either neutron heavy or proton heavy, depending on how it looks. And you'll notice we have the blue sitting on top of that jagged uh, dark line and the orange sitting on the bottom. There's a couple other types of decay that are sitting inside there that we're not going to focus in on too much right now. The blue is beta minus. Now let's think about why it's beta minus. If you're in a zone above the band of stability, you have a few too many extra neutrons. You can't just eject them. Your only option really is to take a neutron and convert it. Well, in beta minus, you take a neutron and flip it into a proton. And if that's the case, your neutron number would go down and your proton number would go up. So not only would you drop toward the band, you'd also go over to the right toward the band. And so you're moving in a downward angled direction heading toward the band of stability with beta minus. Whereas underneath the band, now we're a little bit proton heavy. And in this case, you can't just get rid of protons because there's nowhere to just throw them out. But you can take protons and convert them into neutrons. Now, if you do that, you would go backwards on the proton scale and vertically on the neutron scale, again, moving directly toward the band of stability. So there's three main regions for us on this band. Way off to the right would be alpha decay, too heavy to do anything besides get smaller. Above the band is our beta minus, where we're going to release an electron and we're going to convert a neutron into a proton. And then below the band is our beta plus, or our positron emission where we're going to release a positron and we're going to convert a proton into a neutron. And this band, that's all we really have to know. It's if we're above or below or way off the band. And in doing so, we can determine what kind of nuclear decay will take place. So now that we know the type of radioactive source that can you know, possibly come off here, the question is, well, what does radiation actually do? And in this image, it's kind of giving you a little feel of what are some of the negative side effects of radiation, because there are some positive ones as well. Negatively speaking, we're looking at a highly charged particle or highly ionized particle, basically bombarding your skin cells and making its way all the way to your nucleus to interact with your DNA. And if it interacts with your DNA, it could cause 
a mutation or, uh, or it could cause some sort of a cellular division that just does not stop. That's known as a tumor. And the tumor becomes carcinogenic or cancerous rather if it metastasizes or spreads throughout the body, which can be caused due to harmful radiation. But there's radiation around you everywhere. And to put this in perspective, this image shows you just how easy it is to stop the radiation from flowing. Alpha particles, although they're extremely heavy and extremely massive and able to carry a lot of ionization potential, they can be blocked by a piece of paper because they're just kind of like stumbling around. Beta particles, like electrons, have a little bit more wiggle room, but again, a simple sheet of aluminum is about enough to stop them. It's the gamma particles that often are the most penetrating, but on top of that, they're the smallest, so having a direct contact hit is very unlikely. And on top of that, it's also really, really hard to have the perfect ionization energy to do that. But there's other forms of ionization energy, like x-rays, that can also do this. Ultraviolet radiation can cause some sort, sort of mutations within the skin cells, but it's a little less likely, and you just are a little bit more exposed to them, so it's a little bit more dangerous because of that, aka sunlight. So this last chart just kind of gives you a feel of, okay, how dangerous are these particles in terms of ionization potential? In other words, how likely are they going to hit something that's going to cause a change? And then how easy is it to actually stop them from hitting something? And you'll see right away, alpha is the most dangerous, but your skin is enough to actually stop an alpha particle. A piece of paper is enough to stop an alpha particle. It's the beta and gammas that are significantly more dangerous because those have the ability to really penetrate further through, but you'll also notice their ionization potential or their ability to cause damage is nowhere near as high. So besides nuclear reactors, nuclear power plants, nuclear bombs, and I don't know, a host of other things out there, including basically all your medical tests that are done to you today, what other historical perspective really plays in here with uh, nuclear decay as far as we're concerned? And actually even further is something known as the radium girls and i really cannot explain it to you uh better than almost this movie trailer does and there's a new film coming out in 2020 called the radium girls so enjoy welcome to american radium you are paid one cent per dial your work suffers miss cavallo the eight looks like a fat toddler this month's top painter, Josephine Cavallo. Will you help me practice my feeling spaces? I'm studying. I have to be ready to be discovered and go to Hollywood. I want to find a tomb like Tut's, and I'm an archaeologist. <laughs> Be ready in five minutes. Joe? Don't come in, please. Joe? I don't know what's wrong with her. I'm dizzy. Mm -hmm. My joints ache. I lost a tooth and two others are loose. Do you know what's wrong with me? Absolutely nothing. You're healthy as a horse. Where do you work? American Radium. You're dial painters. We believe that exposure to radium can cause devastating tissue damage. <laughs> radium is good for you. Everyone knows that. What does this mean for us? We take American radium down. There's a doctor that can test if your bones are radioactive. Jesse, you sound crazy. I'm not losing my job over this. I'm scared. I'm not going back in there. I'm looking for Bessie and Josephine Cavallo. They did a study years ago. They own it. Own research. That's absurd. It's like owning gravity. American radium is denying the harmful effects of radium. All they have to do is run out the clock. They could drag this out for years. We don't have years. You'll never win. I'm doing it, no matter what. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Everyone put down your brushes. Radium is poison. Bessie, you're trespassing. I won't abandon you. They're trying to silence you. They must be stopped. Do you really think you can beat American Radium? I am going to make American Radium pay for what they've done. Get your, get your 